Valvoline Forest Rally Championship in association with Motorsport Ireland and Quilcha. Championship. This guy, Gary Jennings, dominated the opening round, taking nine fastest times. Will he be able to produce some of the same results today? Well, with that lineup behind him, he certainly won't be taking that for granted. Well, there was certainly no shortage of competition in this year's Willie Lockman Memorial Forest Rally in Carrick on Shore. The host of Top Machinery was headed by none other than WRC Academy champion and Carrick clubman. Craig Breen. First of all, Craig, belated congratulations on the achievement in the WRC Academy. It means that you get to continue living the dream, and that's what you're doing. Yeah, it was it was a phenomenal uh, end to the season last year to to, uh, to bring it all down to the last round, and we had to give it everything. And yeah, as you said, it's it's, an, it's entitled me to do uh, do what I love doing for another another two years because we already had the budget for this season. Uh, so yeah, fa fantastic feeling now, and we've started off on a. On a positive note again, we had this, uh, a victory in Monte Carlo and, uh, and a second place in Sweden and now we're back in Carrick and Shore to, uh, to have some fun and yeah, to, to pay some support back to uh, the people that supported me so well over the last year and, uh, and you know, Carrick and Shore Motor Club having a, a, a quite a big role in, in my career from the beginning so it's, it's, uh, it's happy times to be here. Fresh from victory in the Five Mile Town Gravel Rally was for Manor's Gary Jennings in the Subaru 555. 25 kilometres of an opening stage, really there'll be no time for sleeping. Straight on it, flat out. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, um, we done a five in town last weekend, and we won it on the gravel as well. So it was a good experience to come here now. No more match fit, but um, it's been I think nine or ten years since I was here last. So I'm looking forward, and I'm definitely looking forward to the first stage. Having missed round one due to a back injury, reigning Forest champion Owen Murphy was hoping to get some points on the board in his Hancock shot Evo Nine. I don't know, there's a couple of, there's a, a serious top pin. it's one of the best entries I've ever seen in a, a forestry for a long time, so um, it, I'd say top five will do us fine and if we get good points on the board, all as well. A special guest at this year's rally was Senator Mary Louise O'Donnell, who was highlighting the role of safety within the sport in a piece for the Pat Kenny radio show. Welcomed warmly by the rallying fraternity, the Senator was in safe hands with James Coleman as she prepared to navigate for the local driver in the Sherway Forklifts Escort. Marie Louise, I know the rally fraternity are delighted that you've taken this interest in the motorsport. The nerves shouldn't be that great sitting along with James Coleman. I know we all have confidence in him as a driver. Well, I have total confidence in him and um, I've been nurturing him since I met him. <laughs> oh no, he's wonderful. And because I, speed is one thing, but he is big into safety as well. And he was making the distinction between people who joyride and the safety of this sport because they have to obey so many safety regulations and rules and I think that is really where it's at and that people can have good fun but in a safe environment and know what it is to be safe on the road. Well we hope that you experience the fun and safety today Anne Marie. Don't forget to come back and see if I'm still here. <laughs> we will of course enjoy it. And thanks a million. Got a mortgage, got a mortgage. With Senator O'Donnell highlighting the safety of the sport it's worth noting that among the many associated sponsors of the championship are CCS Race and Rally, who provide hands devices for hire, which are so important for head and neck support inside the car. And with the sweeper cars gone by, Craig Breen was next up in his Ford Fiesta. The WRC Academy champion and current WRC S2000 leader was unsurprisingly quickest through the opening loop to hold over a minute and a half of a lead after stage three. Defending Forest champion Owen Murphy attacked the 25-kilometre opening stage in his usual aggressive style, as can be seen from the in-car camera. Flat six right, and six right, and continuous and Titans for 80. Titans, and flat six left, 60. Keep left at the flat crest at the five right, six left, 130. Flat six right, long Titans at the five right. Sadly, his good early work was undone when he got a puncture midway through, costing the Corkman about a minute. He held fourth after stage three. Party. All right, don't cut. Titans. Don't cut. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Party. Mirage square left long. Watch it, watch it. It's a hairpin. Could be open, hairpin. Right, 
Software. Sporting a dashing new colour scheme was the Subaru of Gary Jennings. Having won the opening round in Donegal, Gary was playing second fiddle to Craig Breen's more advanced machine in Carrick. He trailed the Fiesta by 48 seconds after the opening loop. Japan's Colin Britton took third overall on round one and was well on his way to a repeat performance in Carrick as he held third after stage three. 2010 Forest champion Pat O'Connell slipped from third to sixth when drive shaft problems beset his Mitsubishi on stage three. Pat, there were difficulties for you on the opening loop, but luckily it didn't come until stage three. Yeah, it was um, stage here just before service, so we limped through and we're back here on service now, so boys will fix the car and we'll uh, continue on for the rest of the day. Ian Cochran and Ray Fitzpatrick took fifth in Donegal and we're on course to improve on that with fourth quickest time through stage one. 44 right over crest. Into, and five right into slippy five left. Five right, slippy five left into slippy four right over dip. 170 over mud. Crest four left, slippy after the 170. Sadly, mechanical issues forced retirement on stage two. A couple of overshoots and then this incident on stage one left Monaghan's Vincent Macquarie feeling lucky to be holding fifth place at the service vault. Vincent, were you charging perhaps too hard on stage one? Um, we were, but um, what happened was we uh, we slid on at a junction twice and then we um, hit a rock face, so uh, we're lucky to be back here, but we're going to go out in the last next loop and have a bit of a blast. So. Not so lucky was runner-up from round one, Stephen Wright, the fellow Mullahan native, lost two minutes with an off on stage one. Well, Stephen, literally, you've ran into difficulties on the first stage. Yeah, we uh, slid into a bank on the right-hand side there and uh, damaged uh, one of the pipes going to the intercooler a wee bit, but it was more the time we lost during that. We, we lost over two minutes and really any momentum that uh, I had hoped to carry through from Donegal. So, yeah, just a bad, bad start and bad three stages, but we'll try and get it fixed now and try and not lose the day completely. We can go out and still try and get the miles and make the most of it. With the opening loop proving very attritional, there was worse luck for Enda McNulty, who retired on stage two. It was bad luck also for Ger Lucy, who took out one of our ExactScience.ie boards before crashing out on stage three. It proved a troublesome debut in the Irish forest for Desi Henry's new Citroen DS3. Runner-up in the BRC Sunseeker Rally, the young Antrim man lost a mammoth 15 minutes with spark plug problems on the opening stage. Having better luck was older brother Niall Henry, who held a top 10 position at the break in his Group N Subaru Impreza. We're happy to be still going at this stage. There's a lot of main contenders dropping out and having problems, but uh, we're all in the same boat and trying to get to the finish at this stage. The things out there just turning that slippy. It's like you see the ice in places, just the mucks coming further up and further up, and it's getting dangerous, you know. But we're going to keep trucking in the end, hopefully. It was a bad opening stage for Tyrone's Adrian Hetherington, who was out in a different escort to the one he used in Donegal. Another competitor to have suffered a puncture on the opening stage, not what you wanted, Adrian. Yeah, we got one about um, 10 miles from the from the end of the first stage, and we had a drive, we drove the full 10 mile on it. So. We dropped something like 29 or 30 seconds to see Ms O'Connell and 20 seconds to see McGuire, so I don't know who, what we dropped to anybody else, but that's, that's, it, that's the harm it done us. There was no need to worry about Shane McGuire's times as the fellow Tyrone man was forced to retire his starlet on stage three. One of the sensations of the opening loop was Kilkenny's Shea Power, who led the two-wheel drive class and held seventh overall in his Mark II Escort. 15 seconds in arrears was Derryman Seamus O'Connell. Well, Seamus, thankfully, you managed to escape the difficulties in that opening loop. Yeah, I managed to escape uh, just about. Like, I had a couple of three big moments, you know. I think there was somebody above praying for it or something. But uh, we had, we, we escaped it and got through it, you know. But I'm not really looking forward to the game, but it has to be done. Making a return to rallying after some time away from the sport was Mickey McGillan, also in a Mark II. 
Well, Mickey, can you give us a reaction from that opening loop? Yeah, well, it's, uh, you need to be hot in your heels to make time up in there. But you came out of it without problems? No problems. No, no problems at all. Just a bit rusty behind the wheel. Having missed the opening round in Donegal, Cork's Paul Fitzgerald was currently second in the two-wheel drive battle. Caution, tight five left into six right. Precaution, tight five left into six right. 80. Six here now, 80. Double caution, square left, don't cut, deceptive. Square left, don't cut, deceptive. And four right plus. You cunt. Four right plus, into six left, long. Into five right plus, long. James Coleman made sure guest navigator Mary Louise O'Donnell got through stage one, safe and sound. And as Senator O'Donnell left to make her report for the Pat Kenny radio show the next morning, James told us how she got on. She enjoyed it. Um, she was shocked and stunned with it, I think. She's learned a lot about motorsport in Ireland. I think she realises the amount of safety measures we've put in place and the connection with the RSA and road safety, which is very, very um, important from our point of view, just to separate us from the, the speed on the roads that we have controlled discipline and controlled speed in a, in a, in a controlled area and environment. And uh, she got a really good handle on that, which is very important. And uh, she loved it, but she can understand why men loves it more, she says. And you can listen to Senator O'Donnell's radio report online at CarrickOnSureMotorClub.com. Meanwhile, there was trouble for Waterford's Jer Connors, who had discovered a misfire in his Subaru Impreza. Jer, I know you're under pressure, but unfortunately detected a misfire on stage one. Yeah, we um, were after losing the plug, so just the plug coil was after coming off, but you can't access them when we're on the stage and we didn't see it until we got in here, so... Are you going to have enough time in service here? Hopefully, yeah. We'll get going again. Cork's Mark Murphy was forced to retire with mechanical trouble on stage three. There are no problems for fellow Cork man Ian Chadwick, who held a top ten position at the break. Another Corkonian going well was Ray Benskin Jr., known as Bob to his navigator, Nicky Hegarty, who had a few choice words for his driver at the end of a hair-raising second stage. To a two left over crest, 200. Two left over crest at the bottom here, 200. Two left over crest, 200. 200. Fast three right, repeat, fast three right. Fast three right, 60. Fast three right, 60. Crest one left. Crest and one left, one thirty hairpin left. Crest, one left, one thirty hairpin left. Hairpin left, no. There, here, hairpin. And one right. And one right. Beautiful, one right, 84 right, care in. 84 right, care in slippy. Four. Good. A bob. Ah, uh, Jesus. That's finished anyway. Fucking hell, Bob. <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> In the junior class, Dean Raftery held the upper hand after three stages. The Galwegian was seven seconds ahead of Dubliner Ian Downey, who was hoping to repeat his class-winning performance from round one. Pascal O'Shea and Robbie Hennessy held the class two lead in the Mark II Escort. In class three, a broken exhaust on stage one led to early retirement for Galway crew John Burns and Sarah Whelan. The Valvoline Ford Puma of Andrew Fanning and Derek Gibbs held third in Class 3 for the moment. Matt Chinners and Catherine Levis were over 40 seconds ahead in second place. But pace setter in Class 3 was Donegal's Adrian McElhenney, with Cork's Shane Buckley navigating in the Peugeot 206. How did you find the extended length of the opening stage? Oh, it's good, you know, it kind of took you a while to get into it, but once you got into it, it was good. It should be fun in the dark now, the next run through. Also looking forward to the night stages was overall rally leader, Craig Breen. Conditions are quite tricky, uh, very, very slippy in places, and uh, it was quite deceptive. OK, we've no recce for this event, so just judging from the, the organisers' DVD, it was you know, a little bit different to, to what I've seen there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. We've got a quite a comfortable, safe lead now, and I'm... Uh, yeah, enjoying the stages and looking forward to the prospect of going back out in darkness now and giving it another go. Well, the weather is slightly confusing at the moment. Is it going to rain? Is it not going to rain? But one thing is for sure, darkness is descending. And if the competitors find the first loop difficult, well, the second one is going to be twice as tough. See you after the break.
Welcome back to part two of the William Lockman Forest Rally. As darkness descended around Carrick and Shore, it was very much a case of lights, camera, action for the repeat loop of stages. Having given Senator Mary Louise O'Donnell a spin in the morning, event co-sponsor James Coleman now had Kay Shanahan back in the hot seat as they performed sweeper duties in the Sherway Forklifts Escort. Start five right. At 200 up the middle past junction. One right, only 40 and turn five right in. One right, only 40 and turn five right in. 130 up the middle. Craig Green was quickest again over the 25k Gertrude for a stage and the reigning WRC Academy champion looked unassailable in the Fiesta S2000. Owen Murphy of Ore and Ore Tires Balancholic pushed his Hankook Performance tires to the limit to hold fourth after stage four. Flat six out of a bump scene, 550. Chicane. Whoa! Chicane. Jesus Chicane. Christ! With a more dated lighting system in his Subaru, Gary Jennings lost some time in the dark, but still held second place after stage five. Second fastest on stage four, Colin Britton was on a charge to make up for a two minute time penalty incurred, fixing a clutch in service. One right over the crest jump, go. One right over the crest jump. Yep. One right over the crest jump. One right over the crest jump, 100. Caution, right over crest jump into three left, into sudden three left. Right over crest jump into sudden three left. 60. Three left again, 40. Three left, 40. One right and torn six right. One ahead, one right and torn six right fast. Six right fast. In the dip, 40. Right into three left. Right into three left, 80. Tipperary crew Pat O'Connell and Mark Wiley were forced to retire when they lost the sump guard on their Mitsubishi on stage four. Third on stage four and second on stage five, Vincent Macquarie climbed to third overall, despite oil pressure worries in the Evo 9. Stephen Wright fought his way back to the top 10 after his earlier off. Che Power and Johnny Rafter were still mixing it with the four wheel drive machines, whilst holding the two wheel drive lead in the Escort. It would be a long journey back to Derry for the O'Connell clan with Seamus O'Connell retiring his escort after stage four, while son Tommy was forced to retire his escort from the historic class. Stage four proved the undoing for many drivers with Paul Fitzgerald and Adrian Hetherington both succumbing to mechanical difficulties in their Mark II escorts. In class one, Emmett Cronin and Richie Long had already bowed out of the event on stage three, leaving the way open for remaining class one crew, Joe Shinners and Derry Healy. Sadly, they were forced to retire on the very last stage. In class two, Pierce Donaghy and Damian Lawler survived a few scrapes to claim the runner-up spot in their Opal Corsa. Pascal O'Shea and Robbie Hennessy took the Class 2 win and finished 15th overall in their escort. Tipperary's Andrew Fanning and Derek Gibbs took third in Class 3 in the Valvanine Ford Puma. Matt Chinners and Catherine Levis finished second in Class 3 and 13th overall. Ninth overall and clear winners in Class 3 were Adrian McElhenney and Shane Buckley, who now topped the two-wheel drive points table. It was a white-knuckle ride through the last stages for Class 4 winner Ray Benskin Jr., who put his co-driver Nicky Hegarty through the mill en route to 14th overall. That's why we're here where Lucy's went off. Where we're going. Oh, come on, Bob, come on, tidy it up. Three left, one right. Three left, one right. 60, here, two right over crest, right. only 45 right. Bob, two right over crest, 45 right. Listen, Bob, I don't believe it. Listen to me now, Bob, and back off. Right? Back off now, Bob. 
Had it not been for spark plug issues in the Citron DS3, Desi Henry and Niall Burns would have finished much better than fifth in class five. After a non-finish in Donegal, Fermanagh's Damien and Thomas McGurran were glad to take fourth in Class 5 in Carrick. Ed Colton and Claire O'Mahony took third in Class 5 and 16th overall. 11th overall and runners-up in Class 5 were Mickey McGillan and Aaron Johnston in the Mark II. But clear winners in Class 5 were Kilkenny's Shea Power and Johnny Rafter, who finished fifth overall in their escort. Dean Raftery and Mark Kirwan had led the junior class, but mechanical problems on stage four meant they had to settle for the runner-up spot, behind winners Ian Downey and Sean Bruton, who finished 10th overall in their Opal Corsa. Plagued with a misfire in the Subaru, Jer Connors and Owen O'Neill had to settle for fourth in class six and 12th overall. Core crew Ian Chadwick and Stephen Quinn took third in class six and eighth overall. And considering their earlier off, Monaghan's Stephen and Suzanne Wright did well to take second in Class 6 and 7th overall. 6th overall and 4th in Class 8 went to Antrim's Niall Henry and John Roan. Despite the two-minute time penalty, Colin Britton managed to take third in Class 8 and 4th overall. Having rallied back to 4th place after his earlier puncture, it was a bitter last stage retirement for Owen Murphy when the wheel nuts sheared on his Evo 9. Monaghan's Vincent and JP Mackery took second in class eight and third overall. And almost a minute quicker over the six stages were Gary Jennings and Barry McNulty, who finished top of class six and second overall. But over three minutes ahead were rally winners Greg Green and Gareth Roberts in the Fiesta S2000. The WRC Academy champions went quickest on every stage to take victory on Craig's home soil. The win was especially sweet for the Waterford native Craig, who won this event navigating for his dad Ray in 2008, and can now add his name to the trophy as winning driver. Having won the event with dad in 2008 as a co-driver, it's fantastic to get back here now and, uh, and to win it as a driver. And yeah, it's really good fun today, especially in the night stages. Uh, I just really, really enjoyed myself, and it's it's so relaxing to come back uh, to home people and uh, I, you know drive on home stages that I'm familiar with, and I really, really enjoyed my day. And uh, nice to get my name on the on the trophy uh, finally. So yeah, very pleased. With Craig not registered for the Valvoline Championship, maximum points went to runner-up Gary Jennings. Congratulations, Gary! Top achievement for you, taking maximum points on round two. Yeah, it's been a very, very difficult day, you know, so but we're never going to beat Craig Bain today. So, yeah, it's great to come home second overall and, and uh, to get ma maximum points in the championship. It's fantastic. So there's confirmation of the results at the Willie Lockman Forest Rally. After two rounds, the championship points table sees Gary Jennings extend his lead at the top. As expected, we got that rainfall and the darkness descended, but Gary Jennings managed to do it. He took maximum points for the second round of the championship. The next round, of course, will be in Lismore. We'll be there to get all the best of the action. But for now, from myself and the crew here at the Carrick Hotel, see you soon. The Valvoline Forest Rally Championship in association with Motorsport Ireland and Quilcher.